Hey y'all, welcome to Restless Chipotle Kitchen. Today, we are gonna make taco soup, and you can make it on top of the stove or in a slow cooker. I'll give you instructions for both. And um, it is so delicious. It's got so much flavor, and your house is gonna smell amazing. So if you're ready to start putting those rich party foods from Christmas behind us, then let's get started. Okay, so we're going to chop up our garlic. And I'm not going to chop it real tiny. Um, you could mince it if you want to. I'm not going to take the time to do that because it's going to get nice and cooked. And keep in mind, you can make this in a slow cooker or on top of the stove. I'm going to do it on top of the stove today because I'm pushed for time. But um, I've made it in a slow cooker and it is delicious. Either way, it's good. Either way. I'm using three cloves of, well, actually four cloves of garlic but you can use two if you want. I wouldn't use less than two, and I probably wouldn't use more than four or five, just depending on how much you like garlic. I really love it, and I love the smell of it. Now, you can mince that down even more. Um, a lot of people don't like getting a bite of garlic in their mouth, but once this is cooked and soft, you know, it's, it's not gonna have that bite to it, so. I think that's just just right. I would normally use bell peppers. Whoops, that was an onion. That was an onion trying to run away. All right. I would normally use bell peppers, but I keep these little bitty peppers around for snacks. And I didn't happen to have any bell peppers, but I did have these, so that's what I'm using. So you can use uh, any kind of sweet pepper. You could even use jalapeno if you want, but I think it'd be a little bit spicy for most people if you use this much jalapeno. But I would say a good half cup of uh, sweet peppers. Less if you don't care for them. If you don't like them at all, um, leave them out completely. It's not going to hurt a thing. That's my cooking thing telling me that I haven't started cooking yet. I'm like, yeah, I know I haven't started cooking yet but it turns itself off automatically if I don't get it going. So we'll just cut these up and then I'll turn it back on. Um, how small you cut your vegetables kind of depends on you and what you like. I like a rustic, chunky kind of soup, so I don't tend to cut things really small. Plus, if you've been around for a while, you know I just don't have the patience for that. And I know it's probably terrible, but I just rather get it done. I, you know, I raised eight kids. We had a big family. When everybody was ready to eat, they were ready to eat. We didn't have, I just didn't, just didn't have time to sit down and, and mince um, small pieces of pepper or onion or whatever. I just chopped them up and got them in the soup pot the best way I could. So, moral of that story is, if you want them to be nicely diced and tiny, go for it. If you don't, that's fine too. Just cut them the way that you like them. And like I said, about a half a cup is right. A little bit more, a little bit less won't hurt. You just want that sweet pepper flavor in there. This soup gets better the second day. Um, I almost never have any left for the second day, so it doesn't happen all that often, but um, if you like double it up or um, happen to have some left, don't worry about it because it'll be so good on day two. Just absolutely delicious. The, all the flavors get mixed in there really well. Okay. All right. There's our peppers and our garlic. Get these off. I'm just going to turn this around so that I don't have to move anything and get started with the onion. Now, supposedly, if you don't cut this end off the onion and you chop it up with this end intact, it's not going to make you cry. But I've never found an onion that didn't make me cry. So, you know, use your own judgment on that one. Every onion, 
I don't know if I just have super sensitive eyes or what, but I have put them in freeze in the freezer. I've um, cut them underwater. I've done all kinds of things, and they still make me cry. So I have just learned not to put my makeup on until after I cut the onions. Well, we're just going to do that the easy way. Since it's going to make me cry anyway. There we go. Okay. And I'm just going to cut this in kind of a big dice or big chop or whatever you want to call it. Just quick and easy. I just don't, I don't think y'all have time to play around and I know I don't have time to play around. So if it's not important, I will tell you just do it whatever way you want, the fastest, easiest way. If it's important, I'll always tell you to take the time and do it because it's important, okay? That's my deal. There's just times where you don't need to fuss. And this soup does not require fussing at all. I'm trying to get it cut up before it makes me cry. <laughs> it's getting started. Almost there. Starting to burn. So there's that. Put the vegetables to the side. And in here, I am going to add uh, a, pound and, mm, a pound and a half or so of hamburger, ground beef. All right, now I'm gonna turn this on for sure. And I'm gonna turn it on high on the stove top. And I'm going to put, this is 90% lean, it's 90-10 ground beef. And um, I use that because then I don't have to drain fat off of it. I can just do everything in one pot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start to brown that ground beef. And then once it's started to brown, I'm going to add the vegetables and cook those until they're softened up. All right, the meat is starting to cook, starting to brown a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little salt a little pepper. Keep in mind that when the meat is raw, that's when it will soak up flavor. So you want to at least put a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of seasoning on it while it's cooking. And now is when we're going to put in our peppers and garlic and onions. That's probably two cups of onion, by the way, that, um, it was one onion, but it was a large onion, so about two cups. Again, not rocket science. If you have a little bit more, a little bit less, it's not a big deal. But you want to get that meat good and browned. You want it to be cooked um, before you start adding your broth ingredients and the remaining ingredients. All in all, this takes about 30 minutes. Uh, it's a little quicker on top of the stove than it is in this pot, even though this acts kind of like top, you know, it's supposed to be kind of like top of the stove. Um, I use it because it's a lot easier to get a good video shot when I'm using this than it is when I'm using my stove. But um, on top of the stove, this is just going to take a few minutes, maybe five minutes to brown the meat and soften the uh, onions and peppers. All right, the beef is all cooked and the onions and peppers are starting to soften up. So we're going to add the tomatoes with chilies or, you know, Rotel. I know there's other brands, but I think they'd take away my Texas card if I used something else. Mix that in good going to add the beans and you can add black beans or pinto beans uh, or the ranch style beans whatever you really you want to add with that that's fine 
I'm going to add two cups of corn, and this is frozen corn, but you can add fresh or canned corn to just make sure the canned corn is drained. And a packet of spicy ranch seasoning, a packet of taco seasoning, a teaspoon of cumin because I love it. So that we've got that, we need to make our broth. And it, I'm just going to add uh, chicken stock to this. You could add beef stock to this. You could add um, tomato juice, V8 juice, whatever you want. Um, you just need to get the soupy consistency. And so I'm going to add two cups of chicken stock. And if you're wondering why I'm adding chicken stock rather than beef stock, it's because I don't happen to have any beef stock. But the chicken stock will work just fine. Now it looks a little bit more like soup. I'm going to give that a stir and let it come to a boil. Uh, and, and then turn it down and simmer it for about, about 15 or 20 minutes, just until everything comes together. After that, I'm going to go ahead and add some fresh cilantro and a squirt of lime juice just before I serve it. And then when I serve it, um, I like to serve it with cream, not cream cheese, with sour cream and um, grated cheddar cheese. And to me, that is a perfect meal. So I'll see you back here in a few minutes. Okay, this is simmering along really good. I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit. Everything is cooked and it smells heavenly in here. So good. Now, sometimes what I do is I'll put about um, four ounces of cream cheese or four ounces of Velveeta in here and that's really good too, but that's not what I'm doing today. So today, I'm going to take my cilantro, and honestly, I don't measure cilantro out. Um, I love this. I eat it in my salads and everything else. If you're not a cilantro lover, then, you know, obviously, you don't want to use it, and that's fine. But I'm going to put quite a bit of cilantro in there just because I like it. I'd say put at least a quarter cup of chopped cilantro in there. Um, and if you really like it, just put in half a cup. About five minutes before you're ready to serve it. And then you can add a little bit more cilantro to the top if you want to when you serve it up in the bowls. Okay. Now I'm going to let that simmer and then I'll be back and we'll give it a taste. Okay, y'all. We are good to go. Um, I'm going to just scoop a little bit of this out. Now you can add more um, broth or tomato juice or whatever you want and make it a little brothier, but I really like it just like this. With all of the vegetables and the meat, look at that. Mm, okay, and then what I like to do Just put just a little bit of cheddar cheese over the top and always get the blocks. I know it takes a few minutes extra to grate the cheese, but the cheese that comes pre-grated has cellulose in it to keep it from um, sticking together and that cellulose keeps it from melting and it kind of gives it a kind of dry flavor. And then I'm going to find a spoon. Then I'm going to put a little sour cream on the top and a little garnish of cilantro and a little squeeze of lime. And there we go. Look at that. Y'all, this soup is so good. If you are as ready as I am to put those fabulous but rich holiday foods behind us and start eating a little healthier and a little simpler, this is going to be number one on your list. It's so good. It has all of that Tex-Mex flavor. 
you can cut back on the spice by using half Rotel tomatoes and half regular diced tomatoes or leaving the Rotel tomatoes out altogether and just using diced tomatoes in place of it. You can of course add more spice if you want to by adding jalapenos, but whatever you do, it is absolutely delicious. So, I hope you'll come back next week. I hope you'll subscribe. I love y'all and talk to you later, okay? Bye-bye.